She was active in the club movement. She organized against those women that disliked her because of her skin color. Because right? Bethune was dark. Right? She wore the kind of colors that you're not supposed to wear. Like, why are you wearing that kind of purple green thing? It's like, it's not very, you know, not the way you want to present ourselves. It's not like these colors. Mm -hmm. Wear what I want to wear. Right? So she became the president of the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs. Right? While she was president of Bethune Cookman College, right? an advisor to Booker T. Washington, right? after Washington died, Right. She moved into the position of being the leading black educator in the country. This is a black woman that started a college of which she is a president. There are no white women in this country running no colleges. None. Zero. This is a black woman. Right. Started a college. Co-ed. It's not a women's college. It's a co-ed college. Men and women. She is the president of it. She runs it. Right. When you have the depression and you move into the New Deal, they hire a lot of people. Roosevelt does, trying to get the black vote. A lot of very talented black men. You know, George Hasty, you know. Uh, so Charles Houston. All these people with Harvard degrees. People who went to Amherst College, William College. Right? Bethune said, why are we spread all out? Why don't you come to my house every week so we can figure out what we're doing for black people? It's the black cabinet. It's her idea. What is Du Bois' idea? Wasn't Charles Houston's idea, right? Wasn't Thurgood Marshall's idea, right? It's Bethune's idea. And they met at her house. It's right there on Vermont Avenue. You went out to Washington, D.C., 1318 Vermont Avenue Northwest, still there. Right? It's now the Bethune Museum, right? She said, you're going to come here once a week so we can plan what we're going to do to get something out of these white folks, right? And I'm telling you what time to come, and I'm setting the agenda. Now, Bethune also understood that they didn't think she was all that smart, right? They said, I'm from Harvard, well, I'm from Moody Bible Institute. Okay, we can deal with that. So Bethune had a desk that set up on a platform. It wasn't quite this high, but right, one step up, right? On that platform was her desk and her chair. She would invite you to come sit with her. There's only room for one desk and one chair. That means you have to sit around her, beneath her, which she knew. So she's sitting in her desk and her chair. All these Harvard graduates all sitting in a circle around her. She's looking down at them. They're looking up at her. She knows what she's doing. She no fool. Right? She said, oh, why don't you sit next to me? Oh, there's no room. Why does she have to stay down there then? Right? And to let them know who they were, when she got a headache, or they would, the discussion would get out of line, she would say, Mom Bethune don't feel so good. Sing me a verse or two and let me call you sweetheart. Black men with Harvard degrees, Yale degrees, college professors, trained economists, had to sing to Miss Bethune, let me call you sweetheart, till she felt better. She said, I feel better now. This is going with the meat. <laughs> right? She knows exactly what she's doing. Right? She goes into the White House and cultivates a relationship with the Roosevelt's, Eleanor and Franklin. Right? Especially Eleanor. Right? Franklin has polio. The president has polio. So he had a lot of canes he carried around. He had to have when he walked so all over the place. And he had his initials on, FDR. Ms. Bethune said, you know, my leg is kind of feeling bad. Can I borrow one of those canes? He said, sure, I've got them. They're all over. Let's take one. Mm -hmm. Who's walking around government agencies with a cane saying FDR on it? Ms. Bethune. So she walked into the meeting and said, I'm going to talk about my budget. And puts the cane on the table. You see FDR. So, hmm. Whatever you want. Right? She knows the power of symbolism. She used those things. Right? She carried that cane the rest of her life. There was nothing wrong with her leg. <laughs> she was perfectly fine. Right? When she at my grandmother's house, she didn't. She had a cane getting out of the car. Then as soon as she got down, she laid it down, went on about her business. 
right? But when it, for the public, that had McCain with FDR's initials on because that symbolizes that power coming through me, right? Because as a black woman, they're not going to give it to me. Right? That's how smart she was. They gave her a minor job. Right? Colored Division of the National Youth Administration. Now, what is that? <laughs> National Youth Administration. Look after the little kids. And you look after the little colored kids. Right? Put it in a corner of a building. Gave her a very small budget. But Dune said, well... In order to understand black young people, I gotta understand black families, black women, black old people, all kind of stuff. So I'm gonna have a conference. I'm gonna have W. B. Du Bois give the keynote, he thanked him phrase to talk about the family, you know, the Howard University faculty in economics to talk about work, and then we're gonna figure out black youth. And she spent all the budget the first two months. She don't have no more money. She said, Well, I guess I gotta go home. I don't have any more money. You can't go home. People will get upset. Well, I don't have any more money. You gave me a budget. Here it is April. I don't have any more money. So I've got to go home. No, no, no. How much more do you need to stay the rest of the year? Well, let's talk. She did that every year for five years. <laughs> People thought, this is a poor, dumb, colored woman that doesn't know accounting. Right? Poor Miss Bethune can't figure out how to balance her books, so just keep an eye on her and give her what she needs. <laughs> This woman is running a college at the same time. Right? She knows exactly what she's doing. But as a black woman, nobody can acknowledge that she's smarter than these men. She's not dumb. They just would not look at her and see brains. Right? And she knew that and she used that. Right? Her school in Daytona right, was near the black community and the black community. And the people that had the most money in the black community during the Depression are, of course, who? Number backers, people running speakeasies, people running illegal liquor. Mm -hmm. right? Who did she know that could loan her money to balance the books when the philanthropists came through to check the books? Number backers, <laughs> right? people that ran speakeasies, right? people that had illegal you know, after-hour liquor joints. Mm -hmm. right? My mother told me that she actually had one of them, Mr. Buck Johnson, sit on the stage during commencement one year in his white linen suit, big wide Panama hat, two six guns hanging all out from his coat, smiling at everybody. <laughs> and everybody said, what is this man doing up there with the trustees? He said, he's one of our financial benefactors. <laughs> right? That made sure that if anything happened around that school, nobody touched it. Right? She did not denigrate that man. She did not chastise him and say, I'm Miss Bethune, I can't talk to you. You're some sort of criminal. She said, no, you're part of this community. And you have something to contribute. You know? So while other people are scrambling around trying to make ends meet, Bethune says you have to go where the money is. Talk to him. He's a human being. He don't want to be a number backer. He'd be a banker if he was white. Mm -hmm. He'd be on Wall Street if he was white. Mm -hmm. He's black, so he's out there dealing out the back of his house. So don't judge him. Yeah. So she had that kind of support. Amazing, amazingly skillful woman. Right? She's the only person that was elected vice president for the NAACP and never had to run again. Right? Everybody else has term limits. You know, like you, you know, get reelected every two years. Mm -hmm. Nope. Bethune was the vice president from the 1930s until she died in 1955. Her name never even came up as possibly having to run again. You know, whether it's Walter White or Roy Wilkins or anybody else. They said, well, we have a slate of vice presidents, so what about Bethune and then the rest of these people got to run? The idea of making her go up against somebody else, that she would have to prove herself to them, was unacceptable. They didn't want to annoy her with that. So they left her alone. Right? There's an example of how much power she had vis Du Dubois. You know, we all love Dr. Dubois. I love Dr. Dubois. He's one of the most brilliant people that ever lived. He couldn't stand Bethune. Dubois went to Harvard, right? Went to Fisk. Had a five beta Kappa key. Spoke five languages. And here comes Miss Bethune walking down the hall with that coat, with that hat with the feathers all over the place, with that cane. You know, and just looking at him like, how you doing today, Willie? Mm -hmm. It was to say, ah, 